Mark, five minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with four minutes until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. If you encounter any technical issues related to this live show broadcast, please call our trouble hotline at 336-464-1806. Mark. Four minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with three minutes until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. Three minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with two minutes until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. If you encounter any technical issues related to this live show broadcast, please call our trouble hotline at 336-464-1806. Mark, two minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with one minute until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. We're coming up on one minute until airtime. One minute in five, four, three, two, mark. One minute stations, one minute until airtime for this live show broadcast. Studios, when you hear, please start your archive recording. Coming up on 30 seconds until airtime on my mark. Mark, 30 seconds. Your next and final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Coming up on 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds stations. Have fun. The following.
Wings of Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, live from Palace Social, welcome to the Jose Cruz Jr. Show. The Jose Cruz Jr. Show is brought to you by IBEW Local Union 716 and by Palace Social, one of Houston's premier entertainment and event destinations offering high-end food and cocktails, bowling, virtual reality, arcade, and so much more. Now to lead things off, along with the coach, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, 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 we made it back. We made it. We are here for the Jose Cruz Jr. Show live at Palace Social, a great spot to be the rest of the Mondays for this season. Half off burgers on uh, Thursdays, half off arcades, uh, arcade games on uh, Tuesdays. Uh, very family friendly restaurant, uh, entertainment event venue, just a short drive uh, from Rice. And got bowling lanes just across the way, uh, high end food, craft cocktails, virtual reality. They got the golf simulation. It's not on the copy, but it should be. They have the Sunday bar. What a, what a job there. I mean, they have everything you can think of. Amazing grub. Uh, Walter and I just chowing down on some mozzarella sticks beforehand before we had to lock in and get the game face on. Uh, <laughs> Going to be a fun one here. The man to my right is, of course, Bixby Family Head Baseball Coach Jose Cruz, Jr. Uh, then we'll be leading off, so to speak, with uh, Jacob Davini. Uh, he's had a uh, productive few weeks. And uh, then Robert Fernandez is coming on uh, for our player guest. Coach? Good to be back. How about this? Good to huh? be back. I was uh, so excited I found my my uh, Palace Social card nice. from last year. I don't know if it has any credit, but we'll find out soon yeah. enough. <laughs> get, some, get, get you in the simulator. You can play, some, right. play some games That's over right. here. Uh, well, a lot to cover. We, can, we have so many games behind us, and obviously we'll start off in this week. But just uh, how are you feeling right now? I know it was a tough uh, weekend with so many close games recently, but What's the, the state of the mood right now with the guys and uh, your thoughts as the team? Um, record might not show it right now, but the team is improving in some small ways. What, what have you seen and what are your thoughts now? Well, I, I think the, the guys, as far as a, a want to, they definitely want to be successful and they definitely want to go out there and, and give it all you got and, and, and win games. Um, I think we're, we're putting ourselves in, in some in positions to be able to, to win games and ultimately we're just, we've been like a hit short um, from just winning a, a game, just to put it simply, uh, but you know we just to just keep getting creative, try to guide them the best possible. Um, the group is a great group of, of human beings. They they give you what they have for the most part out there, and we just got to keep challenging them and keep uh, giving them some of that experience that that I think uh, a lot of the guys need to go out there and be be comfortable in those moments. And I, mean, I have a lot of faith that, that yeah, that's going to happen. And the runners in scoring position, that one of the big things you referenced with them, hey, just like you told me, I think, before the Sunday game, you've got to break through that glass and, and come up in the big moment. That's it. And we, and we, we had the opportunities um, late in the game. So it, I, I feel like, it's like the, it was the, the uh, very unique weekend because I, I felt like we could have won all three games. I mean, maybe we take a pitch – uh, and we win the game on Friday. We're we're a hit away again, and uh, we got multiple opportunities on Saturday. And then we're in late innings. Here we are again, with the um, with the winning run on second base and a tying run at, at third base, less than two outs. And you're thinking you're going to score, and for whatever reason, the ball did not bounce in our direction there. Um, but what are you going to do? Just keep going. Baseball is, is funny like that because you just got to keep showing up and. Make sure your mentality is right, your process is right. Um, you're putting yourself in the position to be able to be successful, uh, ultimately win games. And that's what we just got to keep harping on it. I mean, the staff is, is very positive uh, about uh, what we are doing and what we need to do. And, and I think the guys are, are, are after it. They're, they're starting to learn a lot of what's going on. I mean, if you look at it, it's like the, the guys with the most success on our team, uh, for the most part, have been the guys that have the most experience, right? So you have Kite, and you have Jack Rydell, and and um, and Trayton Rank, and those guys are have the most experience. And then we really missed Guy Garibay because he had yeah. he was probably one of those guys who also had the most experience. Um, so then the, the the other guys, for the most part, are guys that 
maybe don't have as much experience or don't have as much at bat so they're out there you know working hard and trying to put themselves in position and and then you have um, guys like like Jacob Davini here who, who's come in and and um, guys haven't done as well he gets the opportunity all of a sudden he does everything they were asking him to do mm -hmm. like everything that we're preaching he's doing you know you, we have injured um, kite and we have Ben Dukes come in and, and step in and you know have a, a great weekend and, and, and state his case for a guy that, that should be in the lineup more uh, does everything we ask so that the, there is starting to build I mean we have a couple of freshmen that are that are coming in and Eric Correa and uh, and Tobias Motley which are very talented young guys that have come up big already in, in, in big key situations so those are those are nice things to see um, and other young guys that are right behind them also starting to show up and do things. Um, and, and then, and then uh, and, and other guests we have here was Robert Fernandez, who's come in. Who was, who was, uh, we didn't see him pitch that much in the um, in the fall. He was nursing an injury, and all of a sudden he comes back in in the spring, and he's just been getting better and better and better to the point where it's like, hey, you're going to be, you're going to pitch in the middle of games in, in meaningful situations and he's like yeah give me the ball and and he's done a really good job about it so there's a lot of things that are happening um that are really good it, it's just it hasn't translated to the wins that we would like like nobody i mean everybody's frustrated about it but you know i'm i'm this is a long term i have like a long term view of this of what we're trying to do this whole process to create the system that that we feel is uh, sustainable and can have it has longevity and and put us in the national limelight, and that's what we're trying to do. Lately, uh, you've seen the positives from the bullpen. It's improved throughout the early part of the season. There were some uh, hiccups here and there, but uh, Chuck gave me some notes here. This, this weekend, the bullpen allowed just one run in 15 and two-thirds, and that was uh, about a .57 ERA, and uh, you held the conference leading um, scoring team and the leading team with homers without a dinger on the yeah. weekend. So what's the bullpen I mean, I think, yeah? I think if, if – my numbers are correct we threw 27 shutout innings this this past weekend you know so it was it was a really good job of, of guys coming in and, and making pitches you know from um tom vincent uh, to davion hickson to her uh to bob uh stratton it was just really good man it was it was a high quality uh like stuff we had a bunch of guys throwing I mean, it, it was crazy. We were looking at it uh, on Friday. We had, like, the, our average fastball was, like, 93 miles an hour for the game. It was incredible. So it's just, like, there's, there's stuff here. There's material, right? So now it's, like, all together. If we can all put it together in the same game and get a little hot streak, you know, it, we can beat anybody. And, and, it, and, I mean, I'm looking at this, and it's, like, the law of averages suggests that the team's going to get hot at the same time and good things are going to be uh, upon us soon. No, uh, Parker Smith had a, a better start getting back to form, probably his best of the season, and Tucker Alch, a, a season high, five and two-thirds. He had a season best, four Ks. Uh, what have you seen from his mm -hmm. progression? How happy to get, get Parker back on track? Yeah, there? I mean, Parker and, and Tucker, they're, they're, it's great. I mean, he, Parker, uh, to begin with, had probably one of his better outings since probably ULL, because I thought ULL was really good. Um, but he came in and he was definitely on a mission had something to prove so i'm excited for that um and then tucker's been uh, a guy also that was a little bit injured and he just he, he's been chopping at the bit for a while i got a chance to just sit with him every game when he was injured and i'm like when are you ready and he's like i'm ready now and i talked to bang he's, like, he's like no he's not ready it's like and the next day are you ready i'm ready now i can give me the ball right now so it was, it was like bangs we got to get him in and uh, he's like, hey, we don't want to blow him out, let him build. And But then next thing you know, he threw an inning, then he threw two, then he threw three. He was up to five. I mean, next thing you know, he's going to throw six. And it's it's just, if he can throw something like that and be a Sunday guy, for example, uh, and on top of McCracken and Parker, I think I feel really good about what our weekends could be mm -hmm. uh, with, with um, you know, the emergence of, of uh, Mr. Fernandez, uh, uh, the improvement of Stratton. The, also the emergence of Davion Hickson, uh, the emergence of, of Tom Vincent, who's been a force. Um, those are all good things. And, and then I think uh, Jackson Blank is on his way. Uh, I thought I saw him throw last week, the best I've ever seen him throw, and he's also chomping at the bit. So it, it is exciting to, to see the guys and, and see how we are growing in, in, in many different areas during the season. 
All right, we're just getting started here. More with Coach coming up here in a second. We've got a lot of other things to get to, and then we have uh, Jacob and Robert coming up after that. We are here at Palace Social. Stay with us. More of the Jose Cruz Jr. Show live from Learfield. Behind every door at Houston Methodist, you know what to expect. Expertise. Whether it's life-saving brain surgery, your 3D mammogram that catches breast cancer sooner, or orthopedic specialists helping you feel stronger than ever. With hundreds of doors across Houston, you can get expert care everywhere. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Flight by Yingling, the next generation of light beer for those who don't follow trends but craft them. Flight by Yingling is uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment. Six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, the official beer partner of Rice Athletics and now available for purchase everywhere in Texas. The Yingling Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. Owl fans need a lift? Look no further than Avalon Bus Services. Servicing the entire nation, Avalon Bus Services can take any group size, any distance, and is ready to service you owl fans. Servicing your owls since 2016, it is a no-brainer why the owls choose Avalon for their transportation needs. With 10 different locations as well as nationwide services, it is easier than ever to book with Avalon Bus Services. To book a ride for your next owls game, whether on the road or here at Rice Stadium, visit AvalonBus.com. Avalon Bus, proud sponsor of Rice Athletic. Welcome back to the Jose Cruz Jr. Show. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, yes. Back here at Palace Social here, the Jose Cruz Jr. Show. Stay tuned in uh, just a smidge. We have uh, Owls outfielder Jacob Davini and then Robert Fernandez on the pitching side. I was so excited when we started. I forgot to tell you a big detail uh, that Rice has moved its game tomorrow against Incarnate Word. Uh, that'll be at 1 o'clock tomorrow at Reckling Park. Uh, 1 o'clock will be on air at 12.50. We got the ESPN Plus simulcast and that Wednesday game against a and Corpus Christi uh, still at 6.30. And as we were discussing during the break, hey, got to get some ball in. So yes, we, we do. got the impending weather coming in. You and Incarnate were discussing to move that up. Yeah, that we were actually uh, Nikki was was the one who um, our trainer was the one who, who was like, "Hey, you need to pay attention to this weather." And I'm like, "What?" So we started looking at it, and then it's like, "Wait a minute." So I talked to their coach. They're going to stay the night here tomorrow anyway, so I gave them enough time to be able to make an, a, an adjustment. I talked to all the powers that be, and everybody could could make it work at 1 p.m. And so I I think there's a window somewhere between probably 12 and five that we can play so it, it's like we have to play this game uh we need to get out on the field again as soon as possible and fortunately uh we're able to make it happen do you want to get into who you're pitching yet with that the midweek game jackson or? blank is, okay. is going to start uh the first day and, and i think um carl's gonna pitch on wednesday i, I think as of right now okay. they're gonna those are the starters um or openers or however you want to call it for those um uh, those two days Midweek special coming up here. Went you out there, Reckling Park, 713 in that special, too. You get some good deals. So wanted to hit more on uh, kind of the season as a whole, not just this past week, as you were talking about. And I was looking at the rankings today, and it hit me like, well, by golly, Louisiana is number 17 in the nation. Y'all went in there and uh, won the series there. Mm -hmm. uh, so was, was, is that one of the big highlights of the season so far, no, so uh, uh, rightfully so. Sometimes we can focus right now on uh, some of the tough spots, but was that the big highlight of the season so far? What, what are some other highlights? Well, I, I think that was a highlight because um, for, for start of that, I thought Parker's best game was there. I mean, it seemed like every time, every first pitch was a strike. Uh, he moved the ball around. He was basically manhandled that team that is a very good offensive team. And then fo follow that up with um, McCracken's complete game. And he was also in control. Um, you know, he was throwing from all the angles and he was hitting. And he was also seemed like everything he threw was strike one also right away. So those are really good. Uh, Davion was dominant. Um, so it was just, it was a really good uh, couple of days offensively. I think um, Kite was starting to get hot. Uh, he was hitting some homers. Uh, we were able to put pressure on them right away. Get a bunch of clogged the bases a bunch, and we end up 
actually breaking through and, and getting some hits with the bases loaded, which is something we've been we've been you know, pushing. So it was it was really good. Defensively was solid. So we were pretty excited uh, about that. Um, I don't know we we go to Hawaii or anyway or Stanford maybe after that. So we played some really close games. We played against some really good teams and and they just got the short end of it and we just kind of kept grinding and now it's like hey wait a minute what's going on? And I think guys are just pressing a little bit. Everybody wants to do it uh, for the team and and we just got to take a step back at that and just just one step at a time keep the line moving. Um, understand that it's just it's the same thing. It just maybe uh, the the inning changes or. Or um, it might seem like the impact or the magnitude of that situation is more, but it's not. It is the same thing. This is what we've been kind of preaching to the guys. You just got to get into position um, and look for the pitch you're trying to do, trying to hit. And when you get it, hit it forward. Nothing more. You don't have to do anything. The pressure is, as a hitter, the pressure's on the pitcher to make a pitch. If they don't make a pitch, just take your walk and move along. Pass it on to the next guy. So I mean, that's what we're. That's part of what we're kind of preaching. We're um, Trying to get these guys to, to get on the plate and and make it tough on the pitcher, let, let, make them adjust to you. Um, battle with two strikes, put the ball in play. I, I thought that was that was good. That was one of the positives really over the weekend. But you know, again, one step at a time. Defensively, you've uh, shown some strides. Uh, it's been between what fourth, ninth in the nation in double plays throughout the the big mm -hmm. chunk of the season. What's been uh, that big progression? The guys obviously athletic out there, but good range. Uh, consistently one of the better double play turning teams. I, I think a combination of things. I, I think how we pitch is um, is something that some of the guys have, have some nice run and some sync and and they're able to, to land those pitches at, at the right time and in the right location, which creates those opportunities at the same time. Um, the, the guy who positions uh, our team for the most part is is uh, Justin Asperger and he does a great job of, of putting guys exactly where they need to be. Um, it is amazing how many times you'll see a line drive hit somewhere and a guy's there, um, and that's Justin's doing. So um, that combination is good, and the guys are pretty talented. Uh, Jack's done a, a really good job, I think, at shortstop. We weren't thinking he was going to be uh, the shortstop, but he's been pretty steady, and, and he always in, in the right spot. Um, so a little bit of a revolving door at second, uh, but the guys are all pretty talented that play second base defensively. Um, so it's it's... Again, we're one pitch away to get out of any inning, so that's something that, that we're very happy to have. You mentioned Kite earlier, kind of a two-part question. Do you know when he could be back, and what's that impact been like? I mean, obviously losing your leading hitter the last few games has been tough, but what, what's that impact been? Do you oh, know and expect no, him definitely. back? Definitely. We, we, we missed him immensely. I mean, he might have been the, the, the whole the guy who, who turned things around uh, last weekend because he is impactful, and he's fast, and he's playing center. Um, he, he's definitely a, he's a force. He's a leader. He does a really good job. He does everything you ask him to do. So um, his experience is definitely invaluable. But um, he's working to get back and healthy. And I, I'm thinking, I mean, it's a it's a better question for for the trainers and for uh, our strength coach Crash. But I'm hoping that this weekend he's he's good to go. I don't know if he's going to play tomorrow, which is uh, I'd go with probably not. Um, and then Wednesday we'll see. But I mean, I'd like him to play this weekend. That's the most important thing. And we had an unexpected guest with uh, Big Ben Dukes coming in here. Look, cleans up nicely, Coach. Uh, yes, he did. What, what, a great uh, weekend. Man. Great <laughs> yeah, weekend. playing in there for Kite. What's mm -hmm. it like that, that he's come in there and uh, had that nice double well, it's, down it's the nice, corner? It's, it's nice uh, for a guy like that to get at bats, too. You know, And yeah. then I'll, on top of it, have something to show for it, which is great. Um, so he can play. I mean, I, I told him weeks ago, I'm like, hey, practice in center. You're... you're you're the backup center fielder, you know. You're it, and he has. And he's defensively, it's been, it's been really, really good. I mean, flawless, really. So those are good things. I mean, he could easily end up moving to right or moving to left or whatever, um, or something. We figure something out because um, the guys that are able to get on first and 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 can run are definitely guys that I like to have in my lineup. All right, coach. Thanks much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bixby Family Baseball Coach for Rice House, Jose Cruz Jr. Stay tuned. More coming up next. We will have Jacob Davini coming up next. It's the Jose Cruz Jr. Show live here at Palace Social. 
big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. The lights, the sounds, the cameras, the electricity. If you can feel it, hear it, see it, chances are an IBEW electrician built it. The members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 716 built the things that make Rice University and Houston great. When your next construction project needs to be on time and on budget, it's time to hire IBEW electricians. Learn more at IBEW716.net. The newly renovated Houston Marriott Medical Center Museum District is a proud new sponsor of Rice University Athletics. For visiting families and fans, the closest hotel to Rice University is delighted to offer preferred rates. Guests will enjoy two new restaurants, a new exclusive M-Club lounge, and complimentary shuttle service within two miles of the hotel. Visit Marriott.com to learn more. Live at Palace Social, this is the Jose Cruz Jr. Show. Now alongside the coach, let's rejoin the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, you know it back here at Palace Social, 6.30, the new start time. But y'all know that you're here. You know that. You're watching. You're listening. You know that you're here. But just take note of that. And uh, we're on the Owls YouTube and Facebook pages, too. Uh, so I had to shave this morning. Uh, once a week ain't bad. But, yeah, we can. Uh, also, it's on the Rice House Insider Podcast by uh, hopefully the next morning. But uh, Palace Social, they got half off on the burgers uh, on Thursday and uh, half off of the arcades on Tuesdays. They got some great. I mean, a golf simulation, you can watch a game here. They got the arcade, they got the bowling. The old Palace Lanes, of course, are right here. 4191 Bel Air Boulevard. Uh, joined now by number 24 of Rice Owls. It is uh, Jacob Davini. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Outstanding. And to have you leading off. I guess we could have bumped you ahead of coach, but that wouldn't <laughs> be too proper. Right? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you like that. Uh, what's been the, the key lately? I was bugging you during the weekend. You gave me some good insight, but tell these uh, nice, fine folks um, settling into the leadoff spot, what's been the big difference for you? I think it's just not trying to make it too much of a big deal. You know, I hit seventh and eighth for the first few weeks that I played, and it's kind of just keeping the same approach, you know, finding a good pitch to hit and even leaning into one if I need to. I took one off the hand this weekend. It still does not feel good, but... <laughs> It's just finding a way to get on base and not trying to make hitting leadoff such a big thing, you know. Yeah. I assume, I assume you've seen Moneyball. See mm -hmm. that? I always quote that. When, when you have that good stretch, I say, what's he do? He gets on base. <laughs> so uh, that doesn't just come – I guess it kind of can come naturally. What approach is it that it, it, you make it seem so easy to get on base so consistently? I mean, last year, if you look at my average on base percentage, they were pretty much exactly the same. I did not walk much. I didn't get hit much. I kind of swung at everything. I was super anxious to get a hit, freshman trying to stay in the lineup. And this year I've kind of just realized that that makes me a horrible hitter. So I've taken, <laughs> I've started taking a lot more pitches, trying to find pitches that I can hit. And I think, I mean, I've seen good results so far. There's a lot more to come in the season. But if I keep just looking for a good pitch to hit, as Coach Giannis used to say, take the balls and swing at the strikes. If I do that, then I'll be fine. <laughs> it's uh, easy advice, but hard to execute yeah. sometimes like that. Or Paul Definitely had that, that, that dry wit, the way to put it like that. Um, so growing up, did you were you a leadoff guy or more in the middle of the order for a big Prosper Eagles? Or? Uh, for Prosper, I usually was middle of the lineup. Summer ball in high school, I was more leadoff, yeah. which I kind of I like hitting leadoff because you get more bats. Yeah. So more pitches, especially in summer ball when you're just out there to – hit as much as you can it was nice to be able to get more at bats and i guess get more hits more videos on twitter which were important back then of course yeah so i've this isn't a new thing hitting lead off but i haven't done it in a couple of years so it's a nice refresher overall just uh defensively offensively lead off has it has everything slowed down come to your sophomore year uh at rice um 
bit bit tough on the books there. <laughs> so yeah. has, it, has it been easier? I know it's never easy, but is it easier coming for, now that you have the freshman year behind you, I'd imagine? Or? I think it definitely is. I mean, I had around 60 at-bats last year, which is, I think, a good amount for a freshman. But summer ball this summer, I had a good amount of at-bats, and that helped me. And so I think just the experience of college pitching has definitely helped me this year mm -hmm. because, I mean, last year I came into it seeing, you know, Every other week in high school, you'd face someone throwing 60 miles an hour. And it's like, what is this doing for me? Yeah. But summer ball this summer and the at-bats that I had last year have definitely helped. Yeah. So I'm also enamored that you played football in high school, which isn't too crazy growing up in Texas, but uh, it's becoming less and less common among baseball players, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Among football players on the team. How many others are there? I need to do some more deep recon um, here. I know Ben Dukes was an all-state receiver. That's right. Wes Welker over there. I know that. Um, yeah. We had, I know Trayton Rank played some football. There's a good amount of guys. I can't even think about or can't even think of it on the top of my head, but we actually have a good amount of guys. Okay. It's kind of surprising. And Davion, did he play? Because I heard he has the best vertical he can throw I don't think he played, down. but okay. he definitely played basketball. We, we played some pickup a little bit in the fall, and he was definitely throwing it down. Okay. Where yeah. are you at on the basketball scales? Davion um, above everybody than you, or you might Dave, Davion and Garrett Stratton are definitely. Okay. Or Garrett. Garrett Mark Perkins and Davey Honor are top three. Okay. Yeah. With respect but, to him, I wouldn't have thought that. Okay. Yeah. No, they can. They both. I think uh, Garrett and Mark played high school basketball. Yeah. I'm not sure if Davey Honor did, but Davey Honor's just a freak athlete. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned to me over the weekend off air how it was kind of tough giving up football. Did you ever think you could have played at the college level, or was that an easier decision? Because, like, reference to what Coach Giannis told me, that was a funny line, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he used to always ask me when I was done, when I was going <laughs> to hang him up. But I, my freshman year, I thought I kind of had an equal chance of playing both sports. And then towards the end of freshman year in spring football, so I was playing baseball at the same time, I tore my PCL meniscus, and I was out for my whole sophomore year. And at that point, I was like, uh, I don't know how I'm going to come back. Football is very injury prone. Just unlike, a bit, yeah. yeah unlike Bear, at least as an outfielder, knock on wood. It's not as injury prone as someone like a pitcher, but I think after I played my junior year, I had some fun with it, and I was like, I don't know if I can go any further with this. So I might as well just stick with baseball, you know, sign off to Rice and have some fun doing what I'm doing now. Yeah, it worked out so far. Um, on the on the study side of things, what have you taken to? What are your what's your major? What's your college? All that good stuff. Um, well, I'm in Weiss, but I'm majoring in finance, minoring in math. Okay. Tom, Tom Vincent got me to minor in math. Because he's, he's computer science and math, yeah, right? computer science and math. Which I don't know how he does it because I'm already slammed with all the classes <laughs> I have. But I really like the math is fun because I have, you know, I have Tom to take it with. And most of my other classes, I'm kind of in there alone. And it's just, you know, school is school. But I like the finance and I like the math. Any area of finance that's stuck out so far? Obviously in a good area, in Dallas area where you're from, that'd I be mean, a good area too. If if I could go back to Dallas, I'd definitely like it. But Houston's a really good area and I'm yeah. get, getting to know the you know, the city as a whole, so I wouldn't be too mad if I had to stay here. Not too bad for a Dallas guy, mm -hmm. right? Just not rooting for bad. those Rangers though, they gotta get that out oh, of you, yeah. right? Yeah. That's not gonna go out, is it? A tough, and they got a big game tonight, too. They're not going to sway you, be a big Astros fan or nothing? No, I'll never be an Astros fan. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone here, but I'm a big Rangers guy. You're in the minority there in that, yeah. too. Um, what about keys for the rest of the season? Um, as, as you heard Coach's perspective, what's the player's perspective about things y'all need to do to turn it around and just focus on? I know the game-by-game -game approach is there, but, but what do y'all have to do here? I think it's just not stressing and not trying to do too much. Like, a lot of times we go out there and – I mean, I'll be up to bat. I'm like, I have to do this or this. But really, I just have to, you know, as Coach Cruz said, hand the bat to the next guy. Let as many people as possible get on base, make their pitchers throw pitches, and, I mean, that'll make us score runs. And, I mean, how baseball works is if we score more runs than them, we'll win. And that's been our problem recently. Right there. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we just have to keep, you know, getting people on base, not just not thinking too highly of yourself when you're in the box when there's – people on base like you don't have to be the guy that hits the home run you have to be the guy that does something positive for your team and gives the bat to the next guy mm -hmm. what's he do he gets on base jacob davini joining us thank you thank you good to know you appreciate it jacob davini of our rice owls stay tuned coming up next robert fernandez comes up to the high table here at palace social this is the jose cruz jr show live from learfield
Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation exam and adjust for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. Owl fans need a lift? Look no further than Avalon Bus Services. Servicing the entire nation, Avalon Bus Services can take any group size, any distance, and is ready to service you Owl fans. Servicing your Owls since 2016, it is a no-brainer why the Owls choose Avalon for their transportation needs. With 10 different locations as well as nationwide services, it is easier than ever to book with Avalon Bus Services. To book a ride for your next Owl... Whether on the road or here at Rice Stadium, visit AvalonBus.com. Avalon Bus, proud sponsor of Rice Athletics. Rice teams and traditions are legendary. Our team as strategic wealth designers are proud to be a partner of Rice Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Owls Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go out. Welcome back to the Jose Cruz Jr. Show. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, coming out. Thanks to all of y'all on that stream tonight, uh, watching and listening in. Uh, remember, Rice coming up tomorrow, if you did not see that change. Uh, 1 o'clock against them Cardinals of Incarnate Word. And uh, Wednesday against a Corpus Christi, 6.30. All that on ESPN+, Plus, the Varsity Network app, Owls Game Day app, RiceOwls.com as well. And streaming these shows also on YouTube and Facebook. You can uh, share that with an owl friend or 10. That would help us. And uh, we're on the Rice Owls Insider podcast by the next morning. Uh, joined now by Robert Fernandez of our Rice Owls pitching staff. How are we doing, young man? Doing very good. Thank you good? Yep. They all, they all came out. They heard you were coming. <laughs> I appreciate Come out. You, you bring out the big crowd here. That's nice That's of you awesome. to, to do that. Powell Social folks appreciate that. Kind of on the uh, similar line with what I asked Jacob for you, what's been the, the big uh, reason for your improvement? We've, we've seen it come, we've seen it come, and then you've stacked uh, some nice outings recently. What, what, what's gone into that? Yeah, for me, it's just been getting comfortable coming back from surgery. I wasn't really comfortable in the preseason. But every time I keep going on the mound, I keep getting uh, more feel for my pitches. And then just trusting Coach Banks. He knows what he's doing. The pitch call is great. And then just listening to what he has, uh, has to give me. Describe that path to Rice as mm. you're a Florida guy. Coach Cruz, obviously, with his ties there. I don't want to assume that was the reason, but mm. uh, coming from Miami area to mm. here, what was that connection? Correct. So I played uh, high school at Belen Jesuit, played there four years, only pitched six innings, also was hurt during my time there. Um, and then following my senior year of high school, I went to Miami Day College, a junior college down in Miami. And um, my head coach played with Coach Bangs, and they won a national championship at South Carolina. So that was how I got to Rice, off a Twitter video, actually. Um, And then played two years there, got a second surgery during my sophomore year, and then um, now I'm here. Describe going through that rehab Mm -hmm. and the mentality, because I can only imagine that's really tough on everybody that goes through something like that. It's tough, but um, if you put in the work, at the end, you know, you're, you're going to see how far you've come along. And I've seen that already, and I have experience already having two surgeries. So that kind of helped me along the way. What was the big key in Saturday's uh, game? They were effective in that one, too, four scoreless innings. Just throwing strikes. Hitting is hard enough as it is. Yeah. So if you just throw strikes, you compete, and you execute each pitch to the best of your ability, good things will happen. Mm-hmm. Were you always going to be a pitcher or – Growing yeah, up? Yeah, I wasn't a good hitter. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if I'm going to make it, it's going to be as a pitcher? Definitely, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Favorite players growing up um, or influences? Favorite player growing up, Derek Jeter. Okay. I'm a big Yankees fan, yeah. as you mentioned already. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's good from a PR standpoint. You get that mm-hmm. out of the way early, oh, so you course. can control that message. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, yeah. You're in the minority, Robert, in this I building. Know, but I'm aware. What was that? I guess that was a Wichita trip when I pointed that out Correct. to you. A mm-hmm. Brave guy. Yeah. Especially when they were playing the Astros. I had my jersey, and we swept the Astros. I was there for the Sunday game. It felt good. Um, okay. I made sure I sent Ben Dukes a video of me <laughs> celebrating. So that was fun. Nerves of steel, this one, right? Correct. Nerves of steel. Correct. Do you uh, go to Yankees game, like get to get up there when they come down to Miami? Or yeah. Just yeah. 
when they they usually come down in the summer to Miami, and I'm I'm there for every game. Okay, I love watching them play. But you're the one non obnoxious Yankees fan, right? I'm, mm. I'm assuming. Are you with the other? No, no. I'm with the others. I'm with the others. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, what's been the big thing you've noticed about coming to Rice, not just on the field, but but coming been a part of the big city before but coming over to houston what have, what have you liked about that i love houston it's a great city there's a lot of things to do it's a lot of fun um the guys have been showing me around new places to go eat fun things to do the rodeo was fun that was my first time okay um so yeah i'm, I'm, having, I'm having a great time here in houston okay jacob got his boots he's going to get you some yeah. ostrich boots too I, I gotta get some get some boots yeah say y'all all that y'all yeah. Get some text mix. Get a rodeo, get a cowboy hat. Okay, yeah. see, we're going to make a, an Astros, a Rangers no. fan out of you yet. Never. Never. Um, what, are you, what are you studying? What, what are you? I'm doing sport management. Okay. What do you want to do after baseball? I haven't thought about that. Okay. Baseball is all I want to do right now. Yeah. And where do you see strides the rest of the season as far as uh, improvements? What do you want to keep focusing on? Well, as a pitcher, we just got to keep doing what we're doing, give the, chance, the team a chance to win. I think that's a that's what we're doing right now. Then the hitters are going to figure it out. Like Coach Cruz says, it's, it's bound to happen. Yeah. What's the big thing that surprised you about Rice, maybe that you didn't know coming here? The campus is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I love the campus. I love the people that go to Rice. Um, they're very supportive of us, the staff, everything. The fans are fun when we get you know, sold out crowds. Like LSU was a lot of fun seeing everyone there. Yeah. That yeah. excites me. I say this respectfully as an old junior college announcer, a little bit different than JUCO life. Oh, huh? completely different. Yeah, <laughs> this is nothing like JUCO. Yeah. Nothing. Do you have a favorite JUCO story? Because I have mine announcing in weird places, getting attacked by insects mm-hmm. and getting stung. Like, do you have any wild JUCO stories? I mean, there's a lot of wild ones. Um, bus rides, you know, flat tires, ten out in the middle of a 10-hour bus ride back home after getting swept. So that was a very, very bad JUCO experience for me. Yeah, it builds your character, though, right? It does build character. It builds yeah. grit. JUCO guys, tougher than a $2 steak, that's what I say, right? <laughs> I heard that phrase, right? Hey, thanks for, for coming out. You did a great job, and uh, keep it up on the, on the diamond Thank as well, you. too. Appreciate, Appreciate you. It. Robert Fernandez of R. Rice Owls. Somebody get him. Come on, you don't get him a jersey. Get him, you might get an Astros jersey or something. I don't know. That's your job, Ben. You can do that. Stay tuned. I'll wrap up the show coming up after this. This is the uh, Jose Cruz Jr. Show live here from Palace Social on Learfield. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you got to park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. The lights, the sounds, the cameras, the electricity. If you can feel it, hear it, see it, chances are an IBEW electrician built it. The members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 716 built the things that make Rice University and Houston great. When your next construction project needs to be on time and on budget, it's time to hire IBEW electricians. Learn more at IBEW716.net. Live at Palace Social, this is the Jose Cruz Jr. Show. Now alongside the coach, let's rejoin the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Coach said you can handle it to uh, wrap this one up here. Again, I appreciate uh, the Palace Social folks. Uh, Thanks to Billy Forney. Thanks to Joanna, uh, Chris, our server, Zach. Uh, tending the good stuff, tending the bar over there. A uh, reminder that uh, this week, tomorrow, uh, 1 o'clock against uh, the Cardinals of Incarnate Word. And then that time, is, that's a, not the usual 1 o'clock start time. So I've uh, been moved from 6.30, as uh, Coach mentioned earlier, trying to get it in uh, with the Thunder Boomers coming in. Wednesday still against A&M Corpus Christi. 
all those on ESPN Plus and the Varsity Network app and uh, RiceHouse.com. And, of course, this weekend set against UAB coming up uh, 6.30, and 1. Back to those uh, regular, uh, regular start time against uh, the Blazers. We're on YouTube and Facebook as well. Share with an Al's friend, and we got the Rice Owls Insider Podcast by the next morning, too. Uh, but Palace Social, come here and uh, come off in a uh, very family-friendly restaurant, entertainment, event venue, uh, right down the road, 4191 Bel Air Boulevard, right before the tracks and uh, Moeller's Bakery. It is just right down the road. But you probably know that if you're watching and you know that uh, Houston surrounding area. Uh, bowling lanes, high-end food, it's amazing. Uh, craft cocktails, they got VR. They've got the Sunday bar. They've got the bowling, uh, the video games, uh, half off of arcade uh, coming up on Tuesdays and half off burgers on uh, Thursdays. That 610 burger is legit. Uh, half pound of meat decadence. It is amazing. You can uh, book your events, palasocial.com and 713-913-4955. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Thanks for coming out. Give yourself a round of applause there, right? Yeah. Thanks to Coach Cruz. Uh, appreciate Jacob Davini and uh, Robert Fernandez for coming out as well. Thanks to Walter here and Clara back in Winston-Salem Engineering. Have a great rest of this night. God bless. Go Owls. Rice fight. We'll talk to you tomorrow against Incarnate Word and the rest of the week as well. This has been the Jose Cruz Jr. Show live from Palace Social on Learfield. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, you've been listening to the Jose Cruz Jr. Show, live at Palace Social. Tonight's show was brought to you by IBEW Local Union 716 and by Palace Social, one of Houston's premier entertainment and event destinations, offering high-end food and cocktails, bowling, virtual reality, arcade, and so much more. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network.